vision. Say that with me. See it, say it, believe it. One more time. Vision, say it with me. See it, say it, believe it. We're going to talk about it. Vision. Over the next several weeks, it'll be somehow tied into passion time and the life of Christ. I know one thing about this season it does for me is that uh, it humbles me. It makes me want to look at my own life, my own sin, my own mess, my own struggles. It makes me want to get right with the Lord. Y'all listening or yes or no? That's a, beauty, that's a beautiful thing. Let's talk about it. Let's go with the message today, Rog. Appreciate it. We'll see what we can find today using this big old screen up here. Look at that. See, I hadn't seen that at all. Y'all get to see it when I see it. We just write it and he makes it all pretty for us. Amen. How about that? Can we thank the Lord for everybody that serves us here today? I didn't do that. Come on, everybody that serves us. Come on. Come on. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. You're back there. Rog is back there helping me. And a lot of people tell me they hear me on the radio. They watch online. We've got... Last week, we probably had six, 700 people watching online with us. Could be more. We don't know. It probably is more. Big old crowd watching us today. Thank you. And we appreciate it. We love it when you're on Facebook. And many are watching right now on Facebook. And they're responding. They'll write us little notes about it. One lady from Chicago. I know her mom and daddy. I know her daddy. Her mama went home to be with the Lord recently. But she said that she loved it because Pastor Gary kicks her in the tail. Amen. So I don't mean to do that. It's just the way it is. Amen. It's the word doing that. Amen. That's today. Let's look at inward vision. 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 See it. Say it, believe it. Today's message, inward vision. Seeing inside of me. Seeing inside of me. That's what I want to talk about today. Seeing inside of me. Now, Raj, push me, but if you don't mind. Now, where there's no vision, say it with me. The people what? Say that verse at the top again. Where there is no vision, the people perish. We need vision. 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 I've got to be able to see. I've got to be able to see inside of me. There's some places I need to look in there. We're going to talk about it today. Inward vision. Vision. To see it. That's what it means. Vision. You to, to look in places. You can't just look, guys. To have vision, you got to see it, but then you got to say it. Then you got to believe it. The Lord blessed me years ago here with, with, our, with our church. We're not talking about that today, but God gave us vision. To build this place debt free. I thought I was a lunatic. I really did myself. But then. I'd sit out here in my truck. And you know it looked like. I tell it just looks like. You know I say it. I don't mean to be disrespectful. But this place looked like Vietnam. With all the palm trees. And you know just overgrown. And that's the way it is out here in the middle of Rotunda. There's just nothing out here you know. Wild hogs. You know that's what we had out here. And I'd sit on the corner of our property because it was all covered up with palms and mess. You couldn't even walk through here hardly. And I thought I was crazy. Nobody's even out here. Nobody who built a church out here in the middle of Taiwan, you know? <laughs> but you know, the more I'd come out here, the more I'd see it. And then I started to tell you people, we can do this. And I would say it. And I put myself on the hook. I was seeing it and I was saying it. And you know what? Before long, I started to believe it. And not only that, I, heard, I had other people starting to see it and say it and believe it with me. And that's just a building, guys. But that's, a, that's really how it takes to get things done when it comes to vision. We're talking about you today. The inside of you and the inside of me. If you want to change you, you're going to have to see it. You're going to have to say it. You're going to have to agree with God on it. And you've got to believe you can change. And you've got to believe you can be forgiven. You hear me? Yes or no? That's where this message is headed. Let's go. To look inward. To look inward. Inward vision. To look inward. I can't change you and you can't change me. Say that with me. I can't change you and you can't change me. How many have spent time, come on and be honest with you, you spent time trying to change somebody. It was a waste of time. Let me see your hand. <laughs> Dumbest thing I ever did. But we do it, don't we? Listen, if you've got a drug addict in your family, excuse me, 
You ain't the one who's the drug addict. You understand? I've watched people spend their fortunes trying to fix, fix, fix somebody. And I'm all for trying to get people help. I want to help people. But guys, at the end of the day, I can change me. And you can change you. Now I'm talking God's help. I get that. But you, you're going to have to make that decision if you want to change. I can change me. And that's pretty much what I can do. Now, I get up here on Sunday trying to help you preach the word. Amen. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. And then faith can come into your life. And you start reading the Bible. And you start seeing that. And the Holy Spirit, the living God, you get saved. You come in. You, you start to have him walking in your life. Sure, that's how change happens. But if you don't want none of that, Gary can't do squat about it. Y'all hear me? Yes or no? Like talking to a wall. You got to want it. Amen. So inward vision. That's what we're talking about. Then we just set the table, but we're getting somewhere. Award. That word inward. Inward vision. I just look at the word award. Award. A person under the care of a guardian or a warden. If a person is a ward of the state, then they are under the care of a guardian or a warden. Do you understand that? If a person is a ward. We're looking at the word inward. A warden then, who would a warden be? He's one who guards. He's one who guards or keeps the prison or he's one who guards or keeps the ward. Okay? Inward vision. You know what the Bible says about your heart and my heart? It says, keep your heart with all diligence. Keep your heart with all diligence because out of it are all the what of life. All the issues of life. Excuse me, mama can't keep your heart. Okay? And daddy can't do it. You're going to have to keep your heart. I can't be in charge of the hearts of Fellowship Church. Wouldn't that be funny? You'd all be going off a bridge, okay? <laughs> Listen, you're in charge of your heart. You keep your heart. Your heart is the ward, and you're the warden. You guard that heart. You got to care about you. I can't change you. You can't change me. But you can change you. You don't have to be where you're. I'm the keeper of my ward. I'm the one in charge of my ward. Okay? But sometimes people get to the place where I can't change. Or, you know, you're just down in the mouth all the time. And you're depressed all the time. And that's just the way it is. You know why? Because you've given up charge. You've quit. You want somebody else to be. You think if you tell me your sad story for the 19th time, that's going to fix it. Say Yes or no? And then you're going to get tired of me because I'm going to get tired of you. And you're going to have to find somebody else to tell your story to. And it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on. When are you going to change you? Say. That's what we're talking about. What is my ward? What is my ward? It's the center or the seat of who I am. My ward is the center or the seat of who I am. It is my will. It is my heart, guys. I'm not, we, at church, we put on the outward appearance. And Lord, look at us. Look at I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. But down inside, you got some mess going on. Listen, and that mess that's going on that eats you up, you know, you sometimes you can feel something in your gut. You sick to your what? Stomach. That's what we're talking about because that's where decisions are, buddy. That's where it'll churn. And eat you up. The center of who you are. Your will. And I look at a lot of you with pain. Struggle in your life. If you want to live, you got to decide you want to live. You hear me? Yes or no? If you want to go on, you got to decide you want to go on. Even though there's that churn and there's that feeling and I feel empty and I just... Well, I understand that. you got to take charge of you. Vision. Now, this is a toughie, guys, looking within. It's not easy to look inside. It's my gut that we're talking about. It's in my chest. Now, this is my language. It's the center of who I am inside of me. And I've been there, guys. I'm not putting myself above you. But you know what? I can look you in the eyeball and say, you know what? I know what it is to be hurt. I know what it is to be hurt. Oh, you don't know. You're a preacher. Well, then why don't you spend some time with me and I'll have you crying by the time you leave today. How about that? And then what good will that do? Say, 
We try to one-up people with our pain. Oh, I got it worse than you. Oh, hush your mouth. Come on, man. You got to deal with you and I got to deal with me. And I'm different than you and you're different with me than, than, I, than I am. But what's that got to do with anything? Inward vision. This is where operations take place. In the hospital ward, operations take place. It's where I'm imprisoned, the ward, or I live freely. Are you free on the inside of you? Are you free on the inside of you? Without lying to me, are you free on the inside of you? Or there's all kind of crap that you know is holding you prison, holding you a prisoner. Well, I'm going to ask you to look at it. Inward vision. If you're going to change, it's going to be you doing it. God wants to do it. He wants to help you. Seeing inside of me. You push me, buddy. Real change happens inside my what? Help me here. You're like a sleeper. Help me. Real happens, happens inside. Real, excuse me. Real change happens inside my what? Help me now from the what? Seed of my emotions. Help me from the center of my will. From my heart. It's where the healing happens. This is where healing happens. We try, to, we try to have the TV preacher get us all this healing out here. Name it, claim it, blab it, have it, better life, better this, better that. Let me tell you where real healing takes place. Inside your gut. Inside your broken heart. Inside of a life that's miserable. You've got this plastic on. God wants to heal that. He don't give a hoot about all that temporary stuff. He cares about you. Jesus died for you, not for your car, okay? Or for the house you live in or for your bank account. He died for you. He loves you. He wants to change you. Amen? And it's beautiful. It's where freedom happens. Where does freedom happen? Inside my ward. And guys, I'm talking more than just being saved here. I was saved. I was a saved preacher and pastor. And I thought I was pretty good at it. But I was in prison inside of me. Because I didn't know I mattered. I didn't know I had value. I thought my family was more important than me. And keeping my family together was more important than me. And God says, no, Gary, I died for you individually. I love you, Gary. If everybody walks away from you, I never will. You matter to me without performing, Gary. You matter to me without whatever it is you're doing. I love you. And I had to come to terms with that. That was not easy, by the way. Amen? You matter. Amen? Come on, let's keep looking today. So number one, not a hard message today. Let's go with the program. Now we're going to be in two passages of Scripture. We're going to be in Lamentations. We're going to be in the book of Psalms. Here we go with Scripture. Here we go. I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Written by Jeremiah under the inspiration of the Spirit. Wherefore doth a living man complain? A man for the punishment of his sins? Let us search... Let us search and try our ways. Let us search and try our ways. And let us turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our what? Heart. What's our heart? That boom, boom, boom. No, no, no. It's your gut. It's your emotions. It's your will. It's the center of who you are. Let me able to lift that up with my hands unto God, the God of the heavens. We have transgressed. We've rebelled, and you've not pardoned. Don't you want the peace of God inside of you? It's going to take you lifting up your gut and your heart and your chest with both of your hands to God. And saying, I see it. And I'm not just talking about sin, guys. Sometimes I'm talking about that, that will to just not even want to live anymore. And to say, I'm sorry for that. I got to see that I can still live. Y'all hear me or not? Come on. I got to see it. I look into the dark places. I look into the dark places inside of me. Only I can do that. You see Gary. Look at Gary. All energetic and smiley, you think. 
I'm a wreck. Sometimes I'm a wreck. I'm pitiful. Wore out. I don't want to come that way here. That's why I pray in the truck for an hour in the mor on Sunday morning. Get right with him. Amen. But the point is, is that I have dark places, guys. Don't worship me. If I knew your dark places, would I worship you? Mm -mm. That's why I just ain't going to do it to start with. How about that? We'll go worship him. Amen. Come on. I've sinned. That's what the prophet's saying. And he's a good prophet, but he's speaking for himself and the people of Israel. I have transgressed. I've screwed up. What? Royally. Talk to the Lord about your life. Talk to the Lord about your life. Whatever it is in your life. See it though. See it. Here's David, the greatest king. Had an affair. Horrible. Adultery. Which even led to murder. Lying. Covering it up. And he was a man after God's own heart. You know what he had to do? He had to see his sin. He had to see it. He had to see it. You know what he said? He said, I acknowledge my transgressions. Finally. My sin is ever before me because it's in my gut. It's in my chest. It's in my heart. Emotionally, I'm a mess now, the king says. Against you and you only, I take it and I, I take it and I lift it up. Against you and you only have I sinned and I've done this thing in your, this evil in your sight that you might be justified. You're justified. I'm not going to make excuses anymore. You're right for calling this sin. You're right for saying this, that I've royally screwed up. I did. Y'all listening or not? This is the king. When you judge me, you're clear because you're right. Number one. So if you're going to look, you got to do what? you got to see it. Y'all listening to illusion. I mean, this is a message. You're going to have to see it with me, okay? you got to look inside. you got to see it. And it is about sin today and getting right with him. Let me ask you this. If you've been hurt, either by the loss of a loved one or someone leaving or betraying you, is it right for you not to want to live? Yes or no? You think God's pleased with you for wanting to throw in the towel? Yes or no? He is not pleased with you. Why don't you see that as sin? Say, I think if we looked at things a little differently, I'm not trying to be hard or ugly here, guys. And I know you're hurt. I know many of you have had pain. But, but you know, you can go on if you want to. Hello, yes or no? No, you don't understand. Yeah, I do understand. But I can't change you. Why don't you see that? As God loves you, God gave you life. God has a purpose for you on this planet, for you just to, to live in that mess. So it might not be a horrible sin, but it might be. But the point is, whatever it is, you got to see it. Yes or no? Did I lose you? Yes or no? You got to see it. You got to grab it with both hands and hold it up to the Lord. Yes or no? Did I lose you? Pretty simple to me. Number two. I say it. We're talking about vision today. See it, say it, believe it. Number two, I say it. I see it. Inward vision. I'm looking inside even the dark places. That's really where I need to look, those dark places. Get off the plastic out here. In here. The prophet Jeremiah again. I called upon thy name. I love this. Oh Lord, say it with me. Out of the low dungeon. How many have felt in your life? You might be there now. You might have been there in the past. I was in, a, in the dungeon. I was in the dungeon. I was in the pit. It's dark. It's damp. It's cold. I'm not happy. I'm miserable. You've been there before, yes or no? Just me. This is the prophet. I called on you though when I was in there. That's the beauty here. Amen. I got to see it before I call on him. I got to see it. The prophet, he saw himself in it. You know what he decided? I'm going to call on the name of the Lord out of this mess. How about that? I'm going to call on you. I'm going to say it. 
And guess what, guys? If you'll start saying it, take your heart, take your will, take your emotion, take your gut, hold it up with both hands before the Lord, talk to him about it, and see if the Lord won't hear your voice. Amen or oh me? He will hear, how many would say to me, Pastor Gary, I was right there. I was in that mess. I did that and God heard my prayer and I am not in that pit anymore. Let me see some hands. Let's praise the Lord. That's a big deal, guys, for a lot of us. That's a big deal, baby. Come on. Listen, we're talking about vision, seeing inside of ourselves. I got to see it though. See, that's why if mama sees it, if daddy sees it, you know who's got to see it? I got to see it. Why do so many people keep doing the same things they always do? Other people see it. You ever met somebody and when you meet them, you know they screwed up? Don't take you five seconds. That person's crazy right there. They got some real problems. But they can't see nothing. They ain't looking. This takes effort. Got to look, guys. But if you look and you lift it up, you heard my voice. You heard my voice. Don't hide. Hide not thine ear at my breathing, at my cry. Start to say it. Start to call out to the Lord in that pain, in that hurt, in that sin. Don't sugarcoat. Speak truth. Truth sets you free. Talk to him out of your pain. Say it. Change my heart, oh God. Say that with me. Change my heart. Maybe it's a sinful heart. Maybe the inside of you is just rotten and you're just rotting to the core. Nobody knows but you. Maybe it's just that pain that's killing you. Change my heart, oh God. Change my heart, oh God. Change my heart, oh God. Say it. Say it. Y'all listening? Set me free from this dungeon. You ever prayed like that? You ever prayed on your face rolled up in a ball? I have. Rolled up in a ball. Not because I'm spiritual. Look at Pastor Clark. He's spiritual. I'm rolled up in a ball. I'm rolled up in a ball because I want to kill myself. I'm rolled up in a ball because I hurt so bad and I can't fix things that others do. Y'all hear me or not? You've been rolled up in a ball? Let me see a hand. How many have been rolled up in a ball before? There you go. We got some ball rollers out there. Okay. It's my kind of church. I like people who've hurt. I'll take the broken ones. Amen? You matter and you have value. When somebody's broken and don't know they're worth a dime, when they start to realize they have worth and they have value, oh, to see that light go off. And I see several of you like that. Many of you in this church. Beautiful. Amen. That's what you got to do. David says this. That horrible sin he'd committed, that adultery. He said, have mercy upon me, O God. He started saying it according to your loving kindness. I've rest, messed up royally, but you, you love me. According to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. A lot of people don't know God like this. This is who God is. He wants to make you clean he wants to forgive you and, and cast as far as the east is from the west that's the part that satan lies to you you can't be forgiven you're worthless you're useless bull your god's ready to forgive wash me thoroughly from my iniquity from my sins cleanse me from my sin god talk to him like that make me to hear joy and gladness make the bones which you've broken my bones used to praise you there was praise running through my body. Now my bones are broken. Make me to hear joy again. But you've got to want it. Y'all hear me or not? Am I driving you up the wall today? He just drove me up the wall. 
created me a what? Boom, 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 boom. No! My gut, clean it up. My will. Now I don't want to live anymore. I don't want to hurt myself. Oh God, clean that up. My gut is killing me. Oh, give me peace, Lord. Y'all listening? You got to see it. Now, sometimes we can do that. We can see the mess, but that's where we leave it. And that's where our stories come from. And we start telling everybody our grief and our this and our that. And that's okay for a while, but after a while, you got to quit that mess. And then you got to start to see it. And then you start to say it. I don't want to be like this anymore. You have better for me, Lord. I want to go where you want to take me because I know this ain't it. Amen? Creating me a clean heart, oh God, renew a right, quanti- right what? Spirit. See, because there's a wrong spirit there. The spirit of defeat. The spirit of not having a communication with God because there's sin in your life. That is not the right spirit that God has for you. He wants you to know I'm your daddy. I love you. Y'all hear me? He wants you to know if you've been hurt, I did not hurt you. I did not hurt you. I gave my life for you. I love you. You have an adversary, the devil, who's a lying dog. I love you. I want your spirit to be right. I want you to serve me with gladness and joy. I don't want your bones to hurt anymore, to be broken. I want you to be whole. That's God's plan. And that leads us to number three. Not that hard. Say it, see it, what? Believe it. Believe it. The prophet again, Jeremiah. Thou drew, drew us near in the day that I called upon you. You said, don't fear. Here I saw it. Oh, it's awful. I said it. Help me. Out of this pit, this dungeon. And you drew near to me. When I called on you. Wow. And you said what? Fear not. Don't you want to hear that? Yes or no? Oh Lord, thou hast pleaded the causes of my soul. You have an adversary in Jesus Christ who sits at the right hand of God the Father. Why don't you use him, man? Talk to him. He's our judge, baby. But he's our attorney. He's our attorney and he's our judge. We've been forgiven. He's ruled us not guilty because we have been saved by the blood of Christ. Talk to him. He wants to plead your cause. Y'all hear me? Oh, Lord, you pleaded the causes of my soul. You have redeemed my what? Don't you want to live? Say, if you want to live, it's going to be up to you. Mama can't do it. Daddy can't do it for you. You got to want to live. I want to live. Say that with me. I want. Can we say it loud like we mean it? I want to live. I don't care. I'm ready to go. I'm not going to feel sorry for you, even though you're trying. I want to live, man. You got to want that. You got to believe it, though. You got to believe that the Lord's hearing you. You got to believe the Lord's pleading your cause. You got to believe the Lord is redeeming your life. Oh, Lord, thou hast seen my what? You've seen my wrong. The Lord sees everything. You're naked before him. We keep it hidden. Why? Because we don't want others to see it. So we think we can't talk to him. He sees it anyway. Talk to him about it. You've seen my wrong. Look in these dark places and he sees it anyway. Why not talk to him about it? Yes or no? Say. Yeah, but if other people hear about it or whatever. How about not worrying about other people right now? How about worry about you for right now? And you deal with you and you deal with your sin. And let's see where forgiveness takes you. Let's see when you know you're forgiven and you're clean and you're whole. Let's see how much you care about your family knowing whatever was wrong that you did. Once you get clean and you get the strength, we'll worry about that later. How about that? Amen? Jesus Christ, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. We can be made clean. We can made, be, be made whole. Once for what? All. Every priest back in the old time stands daily ministering and offering many times the same sacrifices which could never take away sin ever. 
I love this scripture. But this man who Jesus Christ, after he offered one sacrifice for sins forever, he sat down on the right hand of God the Father. From henceforth expecting he's there and he expects all his enemies are going to be made his footstool. And that's exactly what they're going to do because he's king of kings and he's lord of lords and they ain't, 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 okay? He's right there, right now, making intercession for you. But everybody on this planet, every power, anything against him is just his foot, uh, footstool. He's going to put his foot on them. Got it? See God like that. That's your God. For by one offering, he has perfected forever them that are what? Why has something got to hold me when I've been saved? He saved me. But I've had pain. I've had hurt. I've had loss. I've done this. I've done that. You can live again if you want to. You can be set free. You can be clean. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant I'm going to make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law into their heart. There it is. Where? Boom, boom, boom. No, into your gut. He wants his law to be in your stomach. He wants your law, his law to be in your emotions, into your will, in your brain. Amen? In their minds, I'm going to write my laws. You can live for me. You can have a great life. You can be whole. There is a future. You can smile again. I feel like I've lost you all over the place. And their sins, don't you love this verse? Say it with me, verse 17. And their sins and iniquities will I remember? No! But I can't. I can't talk to him about my dark places. I can't talk to him about the sin in my life. It's too nasty. It's too dirty. It's too filthy. Well, you keep remembering it and let him keep remembering it then. Or he can forget about it. Now, you might still remember it and have that pain and that hurt. And you feel that, that you let people down or let yourself. I understand that. But maybe even over, over time, he'll wash your mind a little bit too. Amen. Why not get that slate clean? Having therefore, brethren, boldness. Boldness. See it. Say it. Believe it. Why not enter to the holiest of holies, right to the blood of Jesus, if it's available for me? Satan says, don't do it. You can't do it. You won't be forgiven. Of course he says that, because he's a liar. He didn't want you to be clean and have life and be powerful again. Or like you've never known before. By a new and living way, which he's consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a what? True what? True and honest. I'm honest with myself and I'm honest with you, God. Finally, I saw it. I said it and I believe it. Having our hearts, they've been sprinkled now from an evil what? Conscience. And our bodies washed with pure water. Verse 23, say it with me. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. How can I keep going without wavering? Are you kidding me, Clark? Last part. For he is what? Who what? A little bit weird today. You'll be fine. I will not fear. Because Jesus pleads the case for my soul. Now guys, this was a message I really intended to be on sin and dark places and bad things in our life. But halfway through this message or third way ended. I just thought up here on stage. I think the Lord touched me this morning just to say to you. If you've had pain and hurt in your life. And it's killing you down deep. But if you're not functioning as you can function and God has for you, why don't you see that as sin? Instead of feeling sorry for yourself, why don't you see that as wrong? I'm not saying we don't weep and we don't have pain and we don't hurt. But weeping lasts for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. It was hard him to talk like that. Take up your cross and you go ahead and follow me and you can keep walking if you want to. Amen. Jesus redeems my life. Jesus sees my injustice and the pain. He sees the injustice I've done. He sees what others have done to me. Jesus is the judge. All I need to really worry about right now is him. He's going to take care of me. I believe it. Say it with me. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wherefore, He is able to save to the, them to the uttermost that come unto Him. 
seeing he ever lives to make what for us? That's who your God is. There's one God and one mediator between God and man. His name is who? The man who? Guys, do you know him? I love this scripture. You tell my wanderings. You put my tears into a bottle. Do you see God in your pain and your hurt in those dark places? Do you see that your God, he loves you? Every tear you've ever shed, he has them in a bottle. That's crazy, isn't it? He loves you that much. When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. For this I know that God is what? He is for me. Amen. Rod, am I done? Guess what? I am. Let's praise the Lord. Come on, I quit. Come on, boom. We're done. I can't keep doing this. It's killing me. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning on our beautiful 15 and a half acre campus in the Bullseye of Rotunda West, Florida at 140 Rotunda Boulevard West. Early worship begins at 8.30 a.m. with our morning worship service beginning at 10.30 a.m. Between these two services we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you are looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would just like to pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fcinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.